We're about to hurt some feelings with this one. The base model Q50 is better than the sport model. Okay, okay, maybe not better, but it is faster. And I'm gonna tell you why. In my last video, I talked about some co components that people add to their Q50s and Q60s that although they look cool, they actually hinder performance. Uh, go check that video out if you have an opportunity. But by the way, thank you guys for stopping in. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button right now and hit the little bell notification as well. Do three videos every single week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, and you don't want to miss out because we got a lot of good stuff going on here on the channel. Uh, but nonetheless, let's get back into this. So the, the previous video talked about adding components to the car that actually slow it down. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about why the base model or at least the non-sport model Q50s are, in my opinion, better than the sport models because the sports, believe it or not, are slower than the non-sports. And, and there's a major, major reason why. I've seen this happen a, a number of times over the last couple of years being involved in this community is this uh, something I'm going to call trim shaming. The sport guys talk down to the, the premium or luxe guys, and those guys talk down to the base model guys. And there's a reason a lot of us choose the base model Q50s in the first place. Um, but first of all, just tired of this nonsense. Who cares what trim level? And it's not that people choose a particular vehicle, not necessarily because of budget or their ability to, to buy something or the, the amount of money they have in their bank account. That's just, it's just, it's a stupid argument to make anyway. But now that that's out of the way, let's talk about this because there's one component in particular that the Sport Model Q50 is equipped with that the other trim levels are not that make that Sport Model slower. Now this might hurt a lot of people's feelings, um, but the big brakes, the big brakes of the Sport Model Q50s are, uh, one piece to the puzzle that actually makes that car slower and I'm gonna give you a little I'm gonna give you some proof I'm gonna give you at least some evidence so you can use that to decide for yourself because I gotta say it is one of my favorite upgrades that I've made to my base model Q50 and there's a the reason I made it uh, was because although the non-sport Akibono brakes the baby brakes as some people refer to them uh, they're actually quite capable um, great stopping power uh, they hold up really well, but in my experience, running the car at Tail of the Dragon, doing multiple laps up and down, back to back, uh, I did start to experience a little bit of brake fade. Now there was a combination there. I still had the, the rubber brake lines. I still had the factory uh, brake fluid. Uh, we had, we did have a little bit more of an aggressive brake pad, and I did have drilled and slotted rotors, uh, but we needed a little bit more. Uh, so I upgraded to the sport brakes to give me a little bit more surface area on the brake rotors, uh, give, her, give me those the dual piston calipers, and went with a little bit more of an aggressive brake pad, uh, along with the stainless steel, sorry, the stainless steel braided brake lines and the the dot the, the dot 5.1 high temperature brake fluid, and that makes a massive massive difference. But where I really noticed the hindrance in performance was in a straight line. So my 60 foot time, my zero to 60 time, uh, even eighth mile time, the ones that I did uh, did record on the street really took a hit when I upgraded to the Sport Brakes. And guys, I, I know this is an upgrade that a lot of you want to make at one point or another if your car was not equipped with it from the factory. Don't let this video deter you. I do have a solution for you, so stick around. Now, I know there were a couple of other elements that were added to this car that, that contributed to the reduction in overall performance, but what really uh, told me that the big brakes were the culprit in terms of loss in my, or reduction in my straight line performance was uh, the last time, the most recent time I've had this car uh, on the dyno at Soho Motorsports, we got some very interesting and very disappointing results. This car has been on the dyno at Soho Motorsports a total of three times. Uh, the first two times were about a year and a half apart from each other. The weather conditions were very, very similar. I think the temperatures in the shop were like 55, 56 degrees, something like that. Uh, and the car made very similar numbers in both of those sessions. Uh, right around 334 horsepower, 375 to 380 foot-pounds of torque, something like that. Uh, both times, the, the, the results were, were very, very close to one another. The third time I've had this car on the dyno, however, uh, the only difference uh, was the big brake upgrade. I actually had some lighter wheels on the car, and that's kind of what uh, came to, to mind right away. Like, whoa, are the wheels and tires different? Uh, but the wheels are actually lighter themselves, uh, the, and they're the same size, and the tires are the same size as well. So the only difference was the big brakes, and we know that the big brake rotors 
the sport brake rotors are substantially heavier than the non-sport rotors. Uh, the calipers maybe didn't necessarily uh, have an effect on the horsepower numbers, uh, but it certainly adds to the un unsprung weight of the car because those calipers are significantly heavier than the non-sport calipers as well. So previously making 334 to, and 334 horsepower to the wheels with the big brakes on the rear, I lost a couple of horsepower and lost uh, several foot-pounds of torque. So it was quite disappointing. Uh, and that's what that was the conclusion that we came to discussing what the heck's going on here with the car uh, it's really just struggling to turn that additional rotating mass uh, and then you combine that with the additional weight the unsprung mass both the front and the rear brakes uh, it slows the car down in a straight line and this is another little piece of evidence that I have for you to sort of illustrate this in if you guys have been following along you saw essentially all of my draggy videos. I've included them at one point or another in, in any number of these vlogs in the past. I was previously able to hit 60 mile an hour in second gear. When I was hitting rev limiter at 76, 7700 RPM in second gear, I was hitting 60 mile an hour. I could rev it all the way up and hit it. Now I'm only at about 54, 55 mile per hour uh, when I'm hitting rev limiter in second gear so i have to shift to third and that's killing my zero to 60 time so due to that additional weight and the additional rotating mass our engine is working just as hard but it's not able to turn the wheels as fast as it used to so uh, it's it's killing our 60 foot time it's killing our zero to 60 time unfortunately um, but you know uh, it sort of is what it is and uh, like i said before uh, this is one of my favorite upgrades in terms of aesthetics because the big brakes do look a lot better um, and it is certainly helpful in reducing brake fade. One misconception about upgrading to the big brakes, and a lot of people say, oh, I can really feel them bite, they stop way better. It's, it's just not true. The stopping distance from the non-sport brakes to the big brakes is not all that much better. It, it's probably immeasurable. Uh, Donut Media, I think a couple of years ago, did a pretty good test on this and gave some really good insights. The, the big brake upgrade, the big brakes, the sport brakes over the non-sport brakes, essentially has no impact on stopping distance. The benefit of the big brakes is the reduction in brake fade. Uh, it distributes the uh, pressure a lot more, but it helps dissipate the heat a little bit better. Uh, it reduces warpage and hot spots and re resists brake fade. And, and that's when braking really becomes important. When you're doing those twisty roads, you're, you know, you're on the brake pedal on and off and really, you know, really working the brake system. Uh, brake fade can really become an issue, especially if you're approaching a, a corner with no guardrail headed off a 500 foot cliff you want your brakes to work when you hit them so uh, in a straight line it's not really you know it's not going to be super noticeable um, but it kind of goes back to what the beginning of this video was the base model being better than the sport model well, better is subjective but don't you know if you're one of those kind of if you're one of those types of people that likes to make fun of people for different trim levels because you, you supposedly have the top level, just stop because there is a reason uh, that people choose base model cars, particularly those of us who really want to modify our vehicles and try to maximize performance because my suggestion to you would be if you are one of those people that really wants to pull peak performance out of their vehicle, start with the base model because you're going to be taking all the components from the factory off anyway. You always change out the suspension you always change the wheels and tires you always do a brake upgrade one way or another whether it's rotors or pads or a combination of both brake lines etc etc the base model is always lighter so if you're going to be reducing weight might as well start with a car that is already lighter from the factory the base model is like 3600 pounds where the sport or the luxe models are up there closer to 4000 so the base model is a better one to start with if you're planning on modifying your vehicle heavily and that holds true for all different makes and models essentially. So I did mention that I had a solution and I do. The solution, probably obvious now at this point, is lightweight rotors. Uh, Z1 Motorsports, for example, has two-piece lightweight rotors for the Q50, substantially lighter than the factory rotors. I wanna say something like 15 pounds per rotor in the front and like 10 to 12 pounds lighter each in the rear. Uh, so that's 20 and 30. It's a 50 pound weight reduction in unsprung weight. That's gonna be a massive difference by itself. But then considering the fact that it's rotational mass, a reduction in rotational mass as well, that's going to be huge. You're going to feel that in your 0 to 60 times, and you're going to feel that in how the car handles as well. So uh, you guys with the sport brakes from the factory and you haven't changed your rotors up, uh, sorry, I'd rather have a base model if you're just going straight line racing. Uh, but if you do have those sport brakes or you do upgrade to the sport brake package, 
find those lightweight rotors if you're really trying to dial in your zero to 60 times or get off the line quick or you know improve your quarter mile time because again you are going to feel the difference and I've witnessed it myself. I've seen physically the, the reduction in horsepower and torque numbers that the car is making, and I've seen the reduction in performance as I track my zero to 60 times. Um, just I mean, the most obvious part of it is hitting rev limiter in second gear and not even being close to 60 mile an hour, or before I was hitting 60, right? at rev limiter, rev limiter in second gear. Uh, and having to shift, right at that when you only have a couple mile per hour left to hit that 60 point that's so frustrating it's so frustrating but guys that really that's just the the point i wanted to make today that you know we want to maximize the performance of our vehicles we want to make them accelerate faster stop quicker handle better uh, and we start doing things to try to achieve those things but we have to really think about how every modification interacts with one another um, so you know we upgraded to, to bigger brakes but we got to think about the fact that we're adding additional weight and additional rotating mass and how that's going to affect the performance of our vehicle so uh, if you have sport brakes already get the lightweight rotors if you're upgrading to the sport brakes plan on getting two-piece rotors um, just to help you keep those horsepower numbers up because you might experience a difference in a negative way and we don't want that so just something to take into consideration something to keep in mind as you start uh, you know messing around with your car adding some modifications and um, chit-chatting having conversations on the Facebook groups and trying to call people out or make people feel bad for getting lower trim level cars because guys line them up see which one's faster Thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate the continued support. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below. I appreciate the continued support. More stuff coming for the Q50 and the 350Z. I hope you guys will stick around. We'll see you in the next one.